Welcome to Fast Draw 101. I'm Howard Darby, and today I'm going to give you tips on buying your first Fast Draw gun. Shooters on the line. Shooters set. During my years in the sport of Fast Draw, I've seen a number of new shooters come along, get all excited about being in the sport, run out, buy a gun, and find out they bought the wrong gun. I'm going to give you some tips today that will hopefully help you avoid that situation and not have to spend extra money. And in this video, I'm going to reference a few of the Fast Draw organizations, the World Fast Draw Association, WFDA, Cowboy Fast Draw Association, CFDA, and the Ohio Fast Draw Association, OFDA, and talk about the rules they have for their guns. Now, of course, all Fast Draw guns must be single action revolvers. And that's like this one here, the single action revolver, the gun that won the West, the six shooter. Single action meaning pulling the trigger does not make the gun fire. You first have to manually cock back the hammer and then you can pull the trigger to have it fire. Double actions are not allowed in fast draw, so that's the first criteria you must have for a fast draw gun. Secondly, it must be 45 caliber for most shooting. For cowboy fast draw, 45 caliber is the only one allowed in the sport. That's because at most of the major competitions, the ammo is provided for you. In World Fast Draw, that's also sometimes the case, but also in World Fast Draw and Ohio Fast Draw, there's a lot of blanks shot in competition, and you'll want as much powder in your blanks as you can get, and the 45 caliber is the largest caliber you're allowed to use in competition. So that'll give you more powder, more powder flying down range, more chance of breaking that balloon. Having said that, if you already have a single action revolver in a smaller caliber, you can still use that for practice and you can use it in World Fast Draw and Ohio Fast Draw competitions. They allow anything above 32 caliber in competition. So go to Spitfire Wax Bullets, CNR Wax Bullets, or Bandit Shooting Supplies. They have websites. If you do a search for them, find them or look at the links in uh, FastDraw101.com where these videos are hosted, you'll find the links to those benders. The next thing you need to keep in mind when buying a fast draw gun is the barrel length. 4 and 5 eighths is the shortest barrel length allowed in all the uh, fast draw associations. This is a 4 and 5 eighths inch here, 4 and 5 eighths from the front of the barrel to the front of the cylinder, 4 and 5 eighths from there to there. Sometimes called 4 and 3 by some of the manufacturers, but 4 and 5 eighths is the shortest. Any longer than that and you're taking longer time to get it out of the uh, holster, so that's what almost all fast draw competitors use. This is a five and a half inch barrel, slightly longer as you can see. And this is a six and a half inch barrel that you'll see is even longer. So four and a half inch, four, sorry, four and five eighths, that's what you're looking for in a fast draw gun. Sights. Sights, like this one here on the Ruger Blackhawk, are adjustable. The, the sight can be moved left and right. They are not allowed in Cowboy Fast Draw or Ohio Fast Draw Old West Division. So it's best to get a gun with the non-adjustable sights like this one here that has a groove down the center and the fixed sight at the front. Or here it is on a blued gun, the groove down the center, sight on the front. That's the non-adjustable sight guns that you're looking for when you're looking for a fast draw gun. Another thing you might want to keep in mind is the firing pin situation. Most modern single action revolvers have what's called an in-frame firing pin. You see here the hammer is a flat surface. Sometimes it has different notches depending on the setup of the in-frame firing pin. But the firing pin is actually built into the frame. It sticks out here, has a spring in it. As you push on it, it goes through the frame and hits the um, primer on the shell firing it. As you drop the hammer in it, it hits the firing pin, pushes it through the frame. On the older West guns, the Colts, the Colts clones, you'll often see the firing pin built into the hammer. And there's a hole in the frame here and it just goes straight through that hole and hits the primer on the shell, igniting it. Now these are good and they work fine. The one problem is when you come to fan it. And even if you're not fanning normally, if you're going to do any sort of fanning of recovery shots, which is allowed, when you come to fan that, it's a spike sticking up there and if you have done the what some people do, which is they fan or thumb back the hammer, forget to pull a trigger, go to recover the shot, and it's sticking straight up, and it'll jam into their palm, rip their palm apart. So keep that in mind when you're buying a single action revolver to decide if you want one with an in hammer firing pin or you want one in the frame that's a little safer, not as likely to 
co possibly cause damage. As far as brands are concerned, I'm not going to tell you which one to go out and buy, but I will tell you some of the more popular ones. There's the Ruger New Vaquero, uh, the Colt Single Action Army, the Beretta Stampede, Uberti Cattlemen, or the USFA Gunslinger. There's a few others out there. What I would suggest is talking to local fast draw shooters or talk to people online, Facebook, maybe the fast draw group in Facebook, or Cowboy Fast Draw Association website, ask questions, join there, and uh, post messages on their forum. One thing I will recommend if you're going to get the uh, Ruger Vaquero, this is the Ruger New Vaquero, make sure it says Ruger New Vaquero down the side. The original Vaquero just says Ruger Vaquero down the side. It's a slightly bigger frame gun, slightly heavier, and one problem is that it has a quite a bit larger cylinder and when the gun is, when you draw it and you're doing speed thumbing, you're, you're thumbing the gun really fast, that cylinder is rotating and locking into place very quickly. The f heavier the cylinder, the more damage that will happen to the different mechanisms as it locks into place and it'll wear out a little faster than the new Vaquero. The new Vaquero will hold up to fast draw better than the old one did. Now once you've got your fast draw gun, make sure you know the rules on sort of modifications you're allowed to do. For World Fast Draw Hollywood Division, Ohio Fast Draw Old West Division, and any sort of shooting in the Cowboy Fast Draw Association, you can't do very much to your gun. The only modifications you're allowed to do is you can remove the front sight, you can smooth the knurling on the hammer because sometimes it's quite sharp and when you're thumbing really fast it can bite into your thumb so you can smooth that out a little bit although you do want to leave it there because you do need some of that uh, to get a grip on the, the hammer as you're thumbing it and you're also allowed to do a tune job on the inside that means smoothing it out making it so it's a, a lot easier sometimes it comes from the factory a little rough depending on the type of gun you buy um, so you can do a tune job but you're not allowed to make change any of the actions of how the gun works and you're not allowed to change anything else on the external of the gun. For example, you can't put a reverse pawl on there so the cylinder spins backwards or any of the other modifications you can do to change the way the gun works. Now if you're shooting World Fast Draw Fanning or Ohio Fast Draw Fanning, you uh, might want one of these guns. This is a highly modified Ruger Blackhawk. They're the best guns for fanning. They hold up really well. And what we generally do is take a 357, bore it out to 45 caliber, and that makes a smaller frame gun that doesn't have as much weight on it. We take off all the sights, we turn up the hammer, we put blocks on the inside, and a lot of uh, tuning to make sure the gun will work great for fast for fanning. Because these guns weren't designed to fan really fast like that, but doing those sort of modifications will make the gun stand up to the rigors of speed fanning. Um, but this is sort of the gun you want to make sure you know what you're doing or buy a used one from somebody who knows what they've done before you uh, uh, start using it in, in competition. Well, I hope that helps with your first fast draw gun. If you have any questions, please check out fastdraw.org where there's more information on fast draw or my other videos, fastdraw101.com. Check out the fast draw group in Facebook if you have any questions. There's a lot of people there who will be able to answer some of your questions. Other than that, hope to see you someday at a shoot. Good shooting.